This is Twit. Who walks among us? I think that's your title, Ron. <laughs> oh, was that mine? Okay. <laughs> well, tell us a story, Uncle Tark. Well, it may come as a surprise to you all that this Boy. week, <laughs> the House of Representatives Committee on Oversight and Accountability welcomed, <laughs> uh, uh, I guess, the true believers, right? They had a hearing called, and I quote, the unidentified anomal- anomalous phenomena exposing the truth wow. <laughs> that was the name of it that's the name of their meeting but they had all seriously of the, i mean they d- put that on the docket that, as that's that? the that's the name of it that's the name of the meeting exposing oh, the truth right kill me now okay but they had uh, a bunch of uh experts and and i guess witness folks now wait uh, who were these seen... experts or experts air quotes for the people not watching the video I, I mean i think that it's really you know for for the listener and the, the the viewer and the reader to decide right it's 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 yet another uh congressional ufo hearing and i'm gonna put say that again Congressional. That means that your tax dollars are paying for this meeting about people saying that there are UFOs. Now, I think that there's life out there somewhere, but I don't think that they're buzzing us for joy rights, right? I don't think that that, that they're doing that. And yet, oh, <laughs> well, there's a recent paper out that would contradict you. That, that yeah, well, well, all kinds of evidence about. You know, we know I, from big, big names. I just think guys, that so. ET has better things to do. But, but, but I, I digress. That's not the point of this, this story. This story is just a note that they, they, they really did take in, like a, a bunch of new testimony from, um, from, from some folks. You know, you've got, you've got. Uh, uh, well, it's uh, some well-positioned a, folks of some stature. A former U.S. counterintelligence officer, a retired yeah. U.S. Navy Rear Admiral, a former NASA associate administrator. You know, uh, all all these people were there. So that was uh, Mike Gold, about, right? Uh, yeah, it was Mike Gold. That's right. Yeah, yeah he so was there it's not. It, this isn't the deputy administrator number two. This is next level down associate administrator, and there's a e- number of those, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And and so they were there to make the case to say that we are not alone in the cosmos. That's what one of them said. Uh, they said that um, excessive secrecy has led to grave misdeeds against loyal civil servants, military personnel, and the public to hide the fact that we are not alone. So they're claiming cover up, right? Uh, yeah. Some of them are. Not well, all of them, but some know, of them are. It wouldn't be outside the realm of possibility. There's been plenty covered up over the years. As as we found out later but you know i still and you know i'm not mike gold who's a brilliant guy associate administrator or some of the others there's some wackadoodles in this field but there's a lot of really smart people i mean yeah. you, know, you don't become a rear admiral by being a, a, a gumball brain i just don't understand and you know maybe this is my naivete how these advanced you know races that can cross thousands of light years presumably either by folding space and walking in through my closet or by coming in a spaceship why they keep crashing into our planet once they get here (laughs) or if they're coming down to look at a carrier battle group you know i mean we can almost make planes that are invisible why can't they you would think so you would think so so well i guess that the whole point is that it it seems like they the, the, the these experts as well as some members of congress say that they um uh, they just they want the government to be more transparent, like nothing should be hidden. In fact, Representative Nancy Mace of uh, South Carolina said that the that that she was disturbed by the lack of transparency, even that the budgets are being hidden about for the people that are looking at a lot of this stuff. So they want to know uh, just more uh, about what's going on and, and get everything just up and out there. So I don't know. Well, are you ready? Are you ready to face our alien overlords, Rod? <laughs> Huh? I feel like no? I've been facing something worse than that for two years, <laughs> Tark. Um, oh, well, we'll see. <laughs> okay. So I love this one. Is SLS a dead rocket walking? That's definitely your headline. Oh, yeah. I wrote that. I so wrote this, that. Is, this has been talked about and talked about and talked about in the space community. Yeah. Less so as far as I'm aware in government circles, but we, there's a new – I hear tell as of last Tuesday, there's a new sheriff coming to town. And uh, actually, I spent this last conference I was at last week sitting next to the gentleman who may very well be the next NASA administrator. Mm-hmm. And I think if that's the case, SLS may not go well, the hurdle. So this is really interesting. And I put this on here. This came from, so the other story, the alien one came from space.com, but everyone else and their mother picked up that story. I heard it on NPR last night. Uh, this one actually is interesting because it kind of has two different sources. Number one, 
is our good friend Eric Berger, who was on the show last episode talking about right. uh, you know his his new book as well as uh, uh, SpaceX and Starship. By the way, we didn't hint about it, but Starship might launch on November eighteenth, through a few days from now. That'll be really exciting. We'll talk about it next uh, next uh, episode. But uh, he uh, Eric tweeted out tweet do we text. Anyway, he posted <laughs> he posted a note this week where he said that he has heard from from conversations from the experts that he has had, you know, all the experts that like that that that, that tell him things that he's seeing a lot of signs that 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 the SLS days are numbered, that it's not it's not 100%, nothing is final yet, but the right. conversations are seriously trending into that uh into that uh, uh in that direction and futurism picked up on that because Eric is not a spring chicken. Eric knows things. We, you know, we, we, we heard all about his expertise on the last episode uh, and they, they really dived into this. And the reason I brought this up is because it isn't new, like you just said, Rod. In fact, there was an op-ed in the Washington Post that said that the SLS really should be canceled to make way for something that's more efficient, that's faster, that's cheaper, $4 billion a year for maybe one launch, right? Uh, not not kind of the, the, the cadence that we were uh, hoping for. So, uh, uh, you know, it's just something that we should be thinking about. This was NASA's biggest rocket since uh, the, the Saturn V. Uh, it's launched once, it's supposedly going to launch again next year, but it's way behind schedule. You know, you know, technically, we kind of should have been landing on the moon by now. We're not yeah. there. And, uh, and it, 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 it's very close uh, um, to potentially just you know, fading away a lot like Ares One X, a lot like Ares Five. Well, except uh, from Constellation, that, you know, the money spent and the metal bent, the time and effort spent. I mean, there's but, there's multiple cores. There's a lot of pieces hanging around. There's all this development, new engines being designed and possibly built. I don't know if they started on the new batch of RS twenty fives or not. So you've got it, all this potential huge waste on a scale that doesn't quite approach the F-35, but, you know, it's still wasteful. Well, On the other hand, you've got the new government efficiency expert maybe coming in, Elon Musk himself. Who oh, yeah, that's that's new too, by the Starship. way. <laughs> but there's also been an awful lot of planning and people, you know, developing pretty convincing plans about how you could achieve uh, at least the interim moon, moon results you want, which is getting there and kind of setting up basic infrastructure not not the whole big thing necessarily just using uh the falcon heavy mm -hmm. and possibly the new glenn you just have to launch it in pieces and that's I, been studied since the 50s and i think that's i think that's the big thing we have a new administration coming in a new yeah. president who made it very clear in the the last the, the end of their administration that they wanted to to, to get to the moon uh as uh, how did mike pence put it uh, by any means, by any means necessary, you know, and meaning uh, Boeing, no more cost plus for you. So, so it is not out of the realm of possibility that 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 viewpoint, that discussion, will come up. And as you mentioned, Elon Musk was officially appointed, you know, co lead uh, along with Vivek Ramaswamy uh, of this Department of yeah. Government Efficiency. There, there is going to be a lot of focus on getting that stuff done quickly. So. Bye bye Social Security. Okay, because think of what you could spend that money on instead of supporting old farts like me. Although I'm not <laughs> taking it yet. Okay, so we got to move along because we're burning time here. But yeah, yes. So, Tarek, yes. Headlines really? <laughs> did we kill life on Mars? Now well, I understand. Did we? <laughs> well, having read the story, I understand what you're getting at. But you, of course, know. I mean, it's funny. You know, when you're writing these headlines or subheads, like I do for my books. Sometimes it takes somebody else tapping you on the shoulder saying, you know that that sounds like X, right? This one struck me as, <laughs> did the Viking landing manage to kill everything on Mars that might have been? <laughs> but what you're really saying is, did it kill the little bit of dirt that was dumped into the life science experiment? That, that's right. That's Well, I will fall on the sword for this one because I'm fairly certain that that's what I, that I think I had a direct input into that headline there. So basically so. <laughs> you were intending what I said the first time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I tell you, no, but this, this is funny because it, this is actually, you know, it, it's not something I think a lot of our listeners in the know, this won't be like a surprising, uh, uh, uh kind of take for them, uh, about like, a, a there has been discussions about the life seeking, um, experiment on on the Viking landers for a long time, uh, and about what did they really 
uh, detect, etc. But the, this week in Nature, um, uh, Nature Astronomy, there was a new study that came out, or or perhaps it's like a a commentary that 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 they published. This the astrobiologist uh, Dirk Schulz, uh, and I hope I pronounce this right, Makuch, uh, at the uh, Te- Technische Universität Berlin in, in Germany. Wow, um, mangled he, that. <laughs> I, I'm sure I did. I'm so sorry, Dirk. But man, Dirk is an awesome name. Yeah, um, isn't it? Yeah. He, like being rock strong or something. Th- that's right. So he he has he has brought back the um, uh, the hypothesis that the Viking landers may have indeed had like evidence of microbial right. life in the palm of their proverbial scoop. Um, but because their detection experiment uh, for this used water, right, just to, to, to as part of the process, that that water was enough to kill the 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 um extremely anaer- anaerobic is that right and no the 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 really dry life uh, yeah. that, that that could have been there that this this life uh, according to this commentary was um even drier than uh than what we see at in places like the atacama desert where microbes get their water from salts that get it's their moisture from the atmosphere but even like a tiny drop of water would be enough uh, like, it's like it's like being drowned basically it's enough to kill those microbes and that because we use that on the viking uh landers uh and you know not knowing the sensitivity of these potential microbes that it was enough to kill them and then when we look at it we just see a bunch of dead dirt and we're like well that's it you know has been planet well, we don't need to go there so and, and, and to be specific so when you say look at it i mean all we were looking at was the gas release from whatever yes, happened exactly so just to to back up a step viking would scoop up some soil it would drop it in one of three funnels on top of the the lander deck and then uh in one i don't think they I think all three uh, i'd have to go back and look i think all three use water but one or two of them actually had a nutrient broth as well which also might have been toxic these little critters because we're just guessing this yeah. is the 60s and they're really basing this on life science info from the 50s um because you know it was the 70s at launch but it was 60s it was being developed and we didn't know a whole lot at that point compared to now we didn't know about extreme files we didn't know about some of these weird life forms how they live under the crust of rocks and oceanic vents and all that it was kind of like you know hey if i have a box of kittens and i feed them some baked chicken <laughs> they'll be okay and they'll pass gas and we can measure the gas and that's basically <laughs> what, what viking was doing but once i read the article which i thought was a really good article so congrats on that despite the title um it was pretty compelling and i, I look forward to reading his paper about you know look this stuff has been living on this dry essentially dead windswept waterless planet of course it's gonna go ah you're killing me if you, if you <laughs> dump a bunch of water on it so it yeah it kind of makes it, sense yeah right they felt like the microbial version of the wicked witch of the west right it's right. <laughs> on mars hey if you enjoyed this clip be sure to check out this week in space you can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below see you there <laughs>